Good morning from the UK and uh, maybe good afternoon or good evening wherever in the world you are watching. My name is Barry Sullivan. I look after admissions in the Cardiff School of Engineering. And with me today we have Dr. Hugh Griffiths who is uh, who used to be the course director for the MSc Electrical Energy Systems. Um, he's currently the head of academic standards for the Cardiff School of Engineering. Um, and he's been involved with this MSc for a number of years. So we're going to be talking to you today about the um, MSc in Electrical Energy Systems and try and cover some more of the technical content um, to give you a better introduction to what you've maybe read on our website. So uh, Dr. Griffiths, um, can you explain, I think you were involved at the start of this MSc, what the uh, sort of the, the aims of the MSc were when it was first developed. Uh, th thank you, Barry. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, yes, the, we started the MSc course a number of year, years ago now with the aim to try and design a course that would meet the, uh, the needs um, of engineers who will be going to be working in future electrical energy systems to meet the challenges for the next uh, 20, 30, 40 years, because those challenges are going to be quite considerable. Uh, we are now at a, a, an important transition period um, in electrical energy. Everyone is aware of the um, <coughs> CO2 targets, the, the, the need to reduce emissions, and that's going to have an enormous impact on, on the electrical system. And we felt there was a need for a new course that would address not only um, to be able to work within the existing framework, but to also meet these future challenges. Now, obviously, um, in this field, uh, technology must be changing and evolving. Um, how has the course evolved over the past, I think, seven years, you said you've been involved with it. How have you seen the course evolve? Well, of course, um, we're now seeing um, emerging greater and greater amounts of renewable energy. <coughs> This is having a major impact on electrical energy systems. Um, down at the distribution level, where traditionally electricity has just flowed one way from the main uh, electrical grid down to the customers, we're now seeing generation embedded within that system. So you now have power flowing in both directions in the distribution systems. Then <coughs> up at the uh, higher end of the system at the transmission level, we're now seeing uh, very large renewable energy generation projects impacting on the transmission network. For example, in the UK, we're now seeing the emergence of very, very large offshore wind generation um, <coughs> farms. That has a major impact on the electrical um, transmission system. This means that the, the behavior um, and the design of such systems is, is changing and evolving. And such changes and projections to the future are reflected in the content of the material that we deliver to the students on this program. Okay. Um, now, I know that you're heavily involved with, um, s through your research and, and well connected to a lot of the other institutions working in this area in the UK. What would you say our, makes our course at Cardiff different from the others? Well, of course, each institutions have their own strengths. Um, at Cardiff, um, the MSc program in electrical energy, energy systems is delivered by academics from two uh, distinct but closely related uh, research groups. <coughs> the first re research group, um, led by Professor Jenkins, is um, <coughs> the research group is called the Center for Integrated Renewable Energy Generation and Supply. It's essentially a power systems uh, <clears throat> research group uh, with six academic staff. Um, the second research group, which is the High Voltage Energy Systems Research Group, this is the group which I'm uh, personally involved with, is led by Professor Haddad. So we have <clears throat> a very unique combination of both a power systems research group and a high voltage engineering research group, uh, two distinct research teams but working together as a team to deliver this program. That's quite a, a unique combination for such an MSc program. Mm. You know, I, I think it, it is. Um, a lot of our students, when they are considering doing an MSc in the UK, um, either, you know, whether they're international students or 
uh, British students, they're obviously making that decision because they want to advance their career. Um, what sort of employment prospects do our students have? What types of industries do they go into? Well, generally students, um, <clears throat> when they come onto the program, have a very good idea of the type of career they want to pursue. And um, it's an industrial career, and it will be <clears throat> frequently with a view to work for um, an electrical um, supply authority at transmission level, at distribution level, or maybe to work for a, a manufacturer involved in electrical power generation. In addition to that, many students are keen to work for large um, electrical engineering consultants. So <clears throat> we see uh, a wide variety of uh, job and career options open to the students, but generally they already have a very good idea of the sector that they wish to work in. Some are very interested in renewable energy, of course. Um, some students may be already s sponsored by their own supply authorities and electricity companies, in which case they automatically then go back to the jobs um, in their, their host companies. Um, <clears throat> but um, generally speaking, um, students will have no problem in finding employment in this sector. Um, in the UK, for example, there's a, a high uh, skill shortage in this particular area. Um, and the same challenges are faced in countries around the world. Um, so there's a very there's a great shortage for electrical um, energy system engineers. Okay, and how do we cater for for the students who enter this course? Um, obviously, they come from a, uh, many different backgrounds, uh, culturally, academically, professionally. How do we sort of help them all come together and and succeed on this course? Well. Um, students generally come from an electrical engineering background. They may have just recently completed an undergraduate course in, a, in electrical and electronic engineering. Um, some students may have done their degree um, some time ago and have maybe three or four years already in industry. Um, other students may not be directly in the, in the discipline. They may have done, for example, a degree in mechanical engineering or a degree in purely electronic engineering. Um, so we do accept students who have strong academic <coughs> background from, um, from a subject area slightly outside the specialist area of electrical engineering. Um, to accommodate um, students from a, a wider background, we make sure that we um, deliver a, a special introductory module which provides a foundation uh, for the analytical work that will continue in the more specialized modules of the program. Okay. Um, and I think I'm, I'm jumping around a bit here with my questions. I could have put them in a better order. But uh, you were speaking before about um, profession, the, the employment prospects, and I think probably close, closely aligned to that would be how engaged uh, we are um, and how engaged our students are with industry during the course. Uh, of course, that's very important, and um, the students um, will appreciate that all the academics who will be lecturing them on this program um, <coughs> are very active researchers. Now, in our area, that usually means that we're working very, very closely with the major electrical players in the in the field. So, for example, uh, Cardiff University is one of uh, the National Grid UK's um, uh, main research centers, only one of four universities in the UK which have that relationship with this major company. So we have very, very long-standing close relationships with these major electrical <coughs> engineering companies. The way in which we then uh, bring that research influence and industrial connection into the course can be in a variety of ways. For example, we have many invited industrial lectures from our industrial partners, people, experienced engineers who we know for many years, they, they will be invited to come in and to give dedicated specialized lectures to our students. Um, in addition to that, we organize field trips. So one particular module that I'm involved with, um, teaching with Professor Haddad on the high voltage side, <coughs> We um, take the students, take the whole group of the MSc students to the National Grid's 
electrical control center. Um, now this is the nerve center of all electricity supply in the UK. The students spend a day there talking with the engineers, seeing, going to the control room and seeing live what is happening in terms of the electricity um, flows throughout the country and also into connections with Europe. That's a fascinating day for them because it gives them the, um, an example of what's happening in practice. They've learnt a lot of the theory, they maybe have done laboratory experiments, they may be doing some projects, but then they're able to see in practice the, um, the real system and talk to the engineers who are actually running the system. And uh, we've been running that visit for a number of years now and it proves to be very successful and popular and we'll, we'll continue with it uh, in future years. Okay. Uh, maybe closely related to that and, and following up at sort of the end of the course uh, after the students have completed their top modules, can you tell us about some of the projects that um, have sort of stood out for you as being pretty exceptional that our students have worked on? Well. To, to continue with what we were saying about the influence of research on the course, the students, when they finish their autumn semester and then spring semester modules, they finish the taught part of the course. They move on then to the very challenging but interesting dissertation part. It's like doing a mini research project. So students are given uh, a very wide selection of research projects to choose from. So we have Let's say we've got uh, uh, about 12 academics who will be offering um, research topics from their portfolios. So the students are able to find their area of interest from that selection. Um, so for example, in my area, uh, working with Professor Haddad in the High Voltage Energy Systems Group, <coughs> we're working on um, many interesting research projects. Um, for example, we could be working on um, projects related to, to new insulation systems. Uh, my colleague Professor Haddad has um, uh, developed a new patent, a patent for a new type of insulator and we are able to manufacture these insulators in the laboratory and test them. And students then from the MSc program often join with PhD students and work in the laboratory, gain experience carrying out experiments carrying out detailed computer simulations. Um, other examples, for, for example, could include <coughs> uh, new uh, transmission systems. We're now currently working on a new area which is called gas insulated lines. We're developing um, the, the use of new types of gases, <coughs> um, environmentally friendly gases, which enable the transmission of very, very large amounts of power in, in pipes effectively. So students are then working on uh, in, in conjunction with uh, research students and research associates, they're working on cutting-edge research projects. That sounds uh, very exciting and uh, something that I'm sure our students are uh, thrilled to be a part of. Um, one final thing for me I guess would be if you could talk to, now you mentioned before we've got 12 academics offering um, projects that uh, our students can be involved in. Um, but I've always felt that one of the things that was really good about the most of the MSCs actually that we offer at Cardiff is the small number of students uh, on it, each MSC. Whereas at other institutions they might be one of 100 or 200 students doing that MSC. Our numbers uh, for this MSC are around 25, 30, is that right? That's right, that, that's our cutoff number really. Um, we have many hundreds of applicants to the course, um, but we're, we're highly selective. And we ensure that uh, all the students who come on the course have pretty much the same high academic level on entry. But there's another more important reason for limiting numbers, and that is um, we've mentioned the dissertation stage of the MSc, which is so important. Um, students there are under individual super supervision from um, an academic member of staff. Um, with the numbers that we're talking about on the course, uh, we're able to limit the number of projects to around about two or three per academic staff. And this means that the students then are able to see their supervisor on an individual basis, on a weekly basis, and, and have that special supervision. 
with very, very large numbers on the course, you would not be able to do this. No, no, I, that, that is, as I said, I think one of the strong points of the course is the, the time you get to spend with uh, your supervisor uh, and academics here. Um, I think we'll probably wrap this up here, but if there are students out there who still have any questions remaining, uh, you can email us on the email address below or contact us via a Twitter or Facebook page. Um, but don't forget, uh, most of you now have your final results, so if you have received those, upload a copy to your Sims online account and we'll be able to uh, confirm you as unconditional and you'll then uh, be prompted to verify the details for your CAS if you are an international student from outside of the EU. You can verify your CAS and uh, apply for your visa to join us towards the end of September. Uh, was there anything else from you, Dr. Griffiths, that you think I missed? Well, um, I, I think we've covered just about uh, everything, really. But just to say, if, if any, uh, anyone who's watching this video now has any further questions and they want to talk in detail with uh, us, please feel free to, to contact us. You could uh, contact uh, Mr. Sullivan or myself directly, and we'll be happy to talk in, in, in greater detail to ask any further questions you may have, um, either about the technical nature of the course or about um, what it's like to be in Cardiff, which is uh, a beautiful city, capital city of Wales, and a very pleasant place to spend your time. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. As a foreigner myself, originally from New York, uh, it is a fabulous city with uh, fabulous people. So I've enjoyed my last eight years in Cardiff, that's for sure. Thank you again for your time, uh, Dr. Griffiths, and thank you to everyone out there who's watching. Please do get in touch if you have any questions remaining. That's all for today. Until next time, bye.